Now the fifth property of greatest integer function is the value of greatest integer function of x will lie between x minus 1 and x. We know that any x is greatest integer function of x plus f and this f it belongs to 0 and 1. So it is greatest integer function of x plus some value. So its maximum value will be simply x and x minus 1 will always be less than greatest integer function value. Now we use this property while solving limits. Say for example, we have this question which is limit n tends to infinite, greatest linear function of 1 square x plus 2 square x up to n square x divided by n cube. So what we know is because this n tends to infinite, it is infinity upon infinity form. Now any greatest linear function of x, it will lie between x minus 1 and x. So I can write 1 square x will lie between 1 square x minus 1 and 1 square x. In the same way, 2 square x will lie between 2 square x and 2 square x minus 1. 3 square x will lie between 3 square x and 3 square x minus 1 and this series will continue up to n. That is n square x minus 1 get a function of n square x and this is n square x. If I add them all up, I can write it as 1 square plus 2 square. It goes up to n square into x and then minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 n times. So there'll be minus n and this is less than greatest function of 1 square x, get a function of 2 square x, get a function of n square x and it will be less than or equal to 1 square plus 2 square up to n square into x. Now for this limit, I'll need to divide it with n cube. So I'll divide each of the three expressions with n cube. And I'll also take this limit n tends to infinite for all the three expressions. Limit n tends to infinite. Here also I'll take limit n tends to infinite. And here also I'll take limit n tends to infinite. Now 1 square, 2 square up to n square. This is nothing but limit n tends to infinite. This is n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 by 6 into x and then minus n will divide by n cube here will be simply so I'm not going to solve this this limit so I'll simply write it as 1 square x up to n square x upon n cube and this is again n n plus 1 to n plus 1 by 6 n cube into x and this is limit n tends to infinite now it's an infinite limit now in infinite limit if the degree of numerator and denominator is same, so in the degree of so the degree of numerator is three, and the degree of denominator is also three. So answer to this limit simply will be the leading coefficient of n cube in the numerator, which is two by six x, and leading coefficient of n cube in the denominator, which is one. And in this case also, it is a polynomial of degree three in the numerator, and here also degree in the denominator of n is 3. So again in this case, it will be 2 by 6 which is 1 by 3 x. Both these limits on the left hand side and also on the right hand side, the value of both the limits is 1 by 3 x. Sandwich theorem or squeeze play theorem says, if we have function fx which lies between f1x and f2x and if I take limit x tends to a f1x If the value of this limit is L and the value of second limit is also L, then in that case, the limit of this function x tends to a fx will also be L. So from sandwich theorem, we can say that the value of this limit will also be 1 by 3x. We use this property while solving the problems in limits. Now the sixth property in greatest linear function again has something to do with limits. So suppose I have any number a which is an integer and h is a very small positive number which is nearly zero then 
greatest linear function of a minus h will be a minus 1 and greatest linear function of a plus h will be simply a. Now say for example if I say 2 minus h. Now h is very small positive number so minus 0 0.0001 so that will make it 1.99999 something and greatest linear function of 1.99 something will be simply 1. But if I take greatest linear function of 2 plus h, so there will be 2 plus 0 0.00000001. So in that case, this value will be 2 point something. So in this case, the value of greatest linear function of 2 plus h will simply be 2. So if it is a minus h, it will be a minus 1. And if it is a plus h, then it will be simply a, when h is a very small positive number and a is an integer. Now say for example, the question is given as, limit x tends to 1, 2 minus x plus a into greatest linear function of x minus 1 plus b into greatest linear function of 1 plus x, it says this limit exists, then find the value of a and b. Now what we do know is the greatest linear function, it is discontinuous at integral points. So it simply means I need to take both left hand limit as well as right hand limit. So if I write so if I write its left hand limit, I can write left hand limit as limit x tends to 1 negative 2 minus x plus a into greatest linear function of x minus 1 plus b into greatest linear function of 1 plus x. Now it is 1 minus. So we are approaching 1 from the left hand side. So I'll do the substitution. I'll let x as 1 minus h. Now when x is 1, h is 0. So I can write it as limit h tends to 0 positive. So this is 2 minus 1 minus h plus a into greatest linear function of 1 minus h minus 1 plus b into 1 plus 1 minus of h. So I can write it as limit h tends to 0 positive. So this is 1 plus h and then a greatest linear function of minus h plus b greatest linear function of 2 minus h. So now this is 1 plus now h is nearly 0 so this is 0 a into now what about greatest linear function of minus h now greater function of minus h is actually 0 minus h. So when it is a minus h, it is a minus 1. So the value of this greatest linear function of minus h will be simply minus 1 and b into 2 minus h. So 2 minus something will be 1. So left hand limit will simply be 1 minus a plus b. Now I'll take right hand limit. Now for right hand limit, I'll write limit x tends to 1 positive and this is 2 minus x plus a into x minus 1 plus b into 1 plus x. Now I'll again do the substitution. I'll let x as 1 plus h. So I'll let it as limit h tends to 0 positive 2 1 plus h plus a 1 plus h minus 1 b 1 plus h plus 1. So here will be limit h tends to 0 positive. So this is 1 minus h. Now 1 and 1 will cancel a into greatest linear function of h plus b into greatest linear function of 2 plus h. Now this is 1, h is 0. Now what is greatest linear function of h? So a plus h is simply a. So 0 plus h is simply 0. So there will be 0. And then plus now this is b. Now greatest new function of a plus h, 2 plus h is simply 2. So this is 2. So left hand limit is 1 minus a plus b and right hand limit is 1 plus 2 into b. So if the limit exists, then I can write left hand limit should be equal to its right hand limit. So left hand limit is 1 minus a plus b and this is 1 plus 2b. So if I'll cancel 1 with 1, so I can simply write a plus b equals to 0. 
So answer to this question is, so what are the possible values of A and B? So A and B can take any real values provided A plus B is equal to zero. So that is the answer to this question. Now the fifth property is, if H is very small number, which is nearly zero, small positive number, then fractional part of H, because this value will lie between zero and one. So this value will simply be H. And if it is fraction part of minus H, then it will be one minus H. So we use this property when we solve questions in limits. Say for example, suppose I have this question, which is limit X tends to zero sine fractional part of X upon fractional part of X. Now, because I know it's a fractional part function and fractional part function is discontinuous at zero. So I need to take left hand limit and right hand limit separately. So I'll write left hand limit and I'll also write right hand limit. So if I write left hand limit, I'll write limit X tends to zero negative sine fractional part of X upon fractional part of X. So what I'll do is I'll let X as zero minus H. So I can write limit H tends to zero positive and this is sine fraction part of minus h upon fraction part of minus h. Now what I know is when h is a small positive number, then fraction part of minus h is simply one minus h. So I'll write it as limit h tends to zero positive. So this is sine one minus h upon one minus h. So if I'll put the value of this h, I'll get this as what? I'll get this as sine one upon one and which is not an indeterminate form. So the value of left hand limit simply will be sine one. Now, what about right hand limit? Now in case of right hand limit, I'll write it as limit X tends to zero positive sine fraction part of X upon fraction part of X. So I'll write let X equals zero plus H. So there'll be limit H tends to zero positive sine fraction part of H upon Fraction part of H. Now when H is small positive number, fraction part of H is simply H. So I'll write it as limit H tends to zero positive. So which is sine H upon H. So if I'll put the value, I'll get this as zero upon zero, which is indeterminate form. So now it becomes standard limit. So value of right hand limit is simply one. Left hand limit is sine one and right hand limit is one. So left hand limit is not equal to right hand limit. Therefore limit does not exist. Now here the question is, we need to solve this limit x tends to zero, greatest unit function of minimum of y square minus 4y plus 11 into sine x upon x, where this box represents greatest unit function. Now if we look at y square minus 4y plus 11, we can write this as y minus 2 whole square plus seven, that means it is always greater than or equal to seven. So minimum value of this expression will be simply seven. So we need to find this limit x tends to zero and then minimum value of seven sine x upon x. Now we know that sine x is less than x, then sine x upon x is less than one or 7 sin x upon x, it is less than 7 and therefore its greatest near function will be 6 and that's your option 2. Now the question is let box x denote the greatest near function then find this limit. Now what we'll do is we'll find left hand limit and right hand limit. So its left hand limit will be limit x tends to 0 negative 10 pi sin square x plus mod x minus sine x into greatest near function of x whole square divided by x square. Now we let x as 0 minus h and in this case it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive and this is 10 pi into sine square h plus now this is h minus sine now this is minus h and get a function of minus h is minus 1 whole square 
upon h square. So this is the limit. H tends to zero. Now we can write this as ten pi sine square h upon h square and plus this is one minus sine h upon h whole square. Now if we make it standard limit by multiplying and dividing it with pi sine square h, then we'll get this limit as pi and here it will be zero. So its left hand limit is equal to pi. Now we'll find its right hand limit. Now its right hand limit will be limit h tends to 0 positive 10 pi sine square x plus mod x minus sine x and get a function of x in this case is 0 whole square whole divided by x square. So it will be this limit x tends to 0 positive. Now this is 10 pi sine square x upon x square and then plus 1. Now we have already solved this. This is pi. So this right hand limit will be pi plus 1. Now left hand limit is pi. Right hand limit is pi plus 1. Therefore this limit it does not exist. And that's your option D. Now here the question is we need to find this limit x tends to 1 positive 1 minus mod x plus sine mod of 1 minus x into sine pi by 2 greatest near function of 1 minus x upon mod of 1 minus x into greatest near function of 1 minus x. Now what we will do is we let x as 1 plus h. I will be this limit h tends to 0 positive 1 minus mod of 1 plus h and plus sine this is mod of 1 minus 1 plus h and here it will be this sine pi by 2 it is 1 minus 1 plus h upon mod of 1 plus h and this 1 minus 1 plus h. Now we write this as limit h tends to 0. Now this is 1 minus mod of 1 plus h is 1 plus h and this is simply sin h. Now here it is sin pi by 2 into greater function of minus h and greater function of minus h is minus 1. So there will be sin minus pi by 2 which is minus 1. And here this value will be mod h and mod h is simply h and here also this is greater function of minus h which again is minus 1. So this minus and minus will cancel. So we will get this as limit h tends to 0 positive minus 1 plus sin h upon h. Now sin h upon h is 1. So minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So value of this limit is 0 and that's your option A. Now here the question is we need to find this left hand limit which is limit x tends to 0 negative and this is x into greater function of x plus mod of x sine greatest integer function of x upon mod of x. Now we let x as 0 minus h and we know that greater function of minus h it is minus 1. So it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive. Now this is minus h. Here this is minus 1 plus h and this is sin minus 1 and this is h. Now h and h will cancel. This value will be simply minus sin 1 
and that's your option C. Now here the question is, we're given that limit x tends to 0 positive x into this summation greater standard function of r by x where r by is 1, 1 to 15. Now we know that any greater function it is less than equal to x but greater than x minus 1 so we can write this greater function of r by x will be greater than r by x minus 1 will be less than equal to r by x. Now if we multiply it with x we can write r minus x will be less than x into r by x and will be less than or equal to r. Now we take this summation r varies from 1 to 15. Now this is n, n plus 1 by 2, minus 15x and it will be this summation r by x1, 1 by 15 x into greatest in function of r by x and will be less than equal to 15 by 8. Now if we take this limit x tends to 0. This is 120, this also is 120, then from sandwich theorem you can say that this limit is equal to 120 and that's your option C. Now here the question is, we are given this function fx and it says f0 positive is p and f0 negative is q. Now p is limit x tends to 0 positive and it is pi by 2 minus cos inverse 1 minus fractional part of x square into cos inverse 1 minus fractional part of x whole square and this is 2 times fractional part of x minus fractional part of x whole cube. Now what we will do is we we'll let x is 0 plus h and we know that fractional part of h is simply h. So it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive and pi by 2 minus cos inverse x is sin inverse. So it will be this sin inverse 1 minus h square into cos inverse 1 minus h whole square whole divided by now we will take h common and then it will be 1 minus h square. We don't have problem with this because it is sin inverse on pi by 2 and this is simply 1. So we are going to write this as limit h tends to 0 and here will be this pi by 4 and then we have cos inverse 1 minus h square upon h which is 0 upon 0 form. Now here what we will do is we let 1 minus h is cos theta. Now when h tends to 0, cos theta tends to 1, that is theta tends to 0. So we write limit theta tends to 0. This is pi by 4 and will be theta square and this is 1 minus cos theta. Now 1 minus cos theta upon theta square is 1 by 2. So this value is simply pi by 2. So value of p is pi by 2. Now we'll find q which is its left hand limit. So it'll be this limit x tends to 0 negative and then it is pi by 2 minus cos inverse. We have to write directly as sin inverse 1 minus fraction part of x square and then cos inverse 1 minus fraction part of x square. upon 2 and this is fractional part of x minus fractional part of x whole cube. Now we let 
x is 0 minus h and then fractional part of minus h is 1 minus h. So it will be this q and limit h tends to 0 positive and it will be this sine inverse 1 minus and it will be this 1 minus h whole square. Here it will be cos inverse 1 minus 1 minus h whole square. Here it will be 2 into we will take 1 minus h common and then it will be 1 minus 1 minus h whole square. Now this is 0 upon 0 form sine inverse 1 minus 1 minus h square. So it will be this one and here we have cos 0 and cos 90 is 0. So it will be this pi by 2 square and into 2. So it will be this pi square by 8. So we have p equals pi by 2 and q equals pi square by 8. Now we need to find the value of p pi by q. Now p is pi by 2. So this is pi square by 2 and q is pi square by 8. So this value is 4. So answer to this question is 4. Now here the question is we are given this function fx which is this summation r very simple 1 to n r square x square plus x plus r upon r x square plus 1 its greatest degree of function. Now we can write this as this summation r very soon 1 to n and we'll take these two terms together we'll take r common it'll be r x square plus 1 upon r x square plus 1 and plus x upon r x square plus 1 now here r x square plus 1 is cancelled and since r is an integer we can simply write this as this summation r very soon 1 to n summation r plus this summation r by is 1, 1 to n, greatest linear function of x upon r x square plus 1. Now summation r is n, n plus 1 by 2 and then we have to simplify this summation r by is 1, 1 to n, greatest linear function of x upon r x square plus 1. Now this function is defined from 0 to infinite to n. That means value of x is positive. So what we'll do is we'll write x upon r x square plus 1 as 1 upon r x plus 1 by x. And if we take a and g n, then r x plus 1 by x by 2, it is greater than or equal to under root r or r x plus 1 by x is always greater than or equal to 2 root r. Now, if we take its reciprocal, then we can write x upon r x square plus 1 will always be less than 1 upon 2 root r. That means it is always less than or equal to 1 by 2. Now, if it is always less than or equal to 1 by 2, then the value of this greatest root function will be 0. So, basically this function f m, it is nothing but n into m plus 1 by 2. Now we need to find this limit which is limit n tends to infinite greatest new function of fx minus n upon fx square minus n cube n plus 2 upon 4 its greatest linear function. Now we are going to write this as limit n tends to infinite and this is greater than function of we will take this n common and here will be n plus 1 by 2 minus 1 and here it will be n square n plus 1 whole square by 4 minus n cube n plus 2 by 4. Now this is limit n tends to infinite 
and here it will be n into n minus 1 by 2 and here we will take n square by 4 comma then we will have n plus 1 whole square minus n into n plus 2 now this is limit n tends to infinite and this is n n minus 1 by 2 and here it is n square by 4 now here n square plus 2n will cancel so this value will be simply 1 now this n and n will cancel this 2 and 4 will cancel twice so we can write this as limit n tends to infinite 2 n minus 1 upon n now this is limit n tends to infinite and this is 2 minus 2 by n now if we consider this bracket as greatest integer function then we know that 2 minus 2 by n is less than 2 in that case value of this limit it will be 1 and if we consider them as simple square brackets then this limit will be simply 2 minus 0 and then it will be 2. In some of the books you will find this answer as L equals 2 but in the question since they have mentioned that this box it represents greatest linear function so I think answer to this question should be L equals 1. Limit x tends to 0 greatest linear function of 2 sin x plus 10 x upon x where this box represents greatest linear function. Now in this case also sin x upon x is 1, 10x upon x is 1 which is 3. Now 3 is an integral point. So at integral point, greatest linear function is discontinuous. So I cannot take this limit inside. So I need to solve it separately. So what I'll do is I'll write it as 2 sin x plus 10x upon x. So I'll use expansion formula. So I'll write the expansion formula for sin x. So it'll be 2x minus x cube on factorial 3, x to the power 5 upon factorial 5, and then plus, and then 10x is x plus x cube upon 3, plus 2 by 15 x to the power 5, whole divided by x. Now here, uh, 2x plus x will be simply 3x, and then 2x cube by factorial 3, it will be x cube by 3, and plus x cube by 3, so it will cancel, and then I will get this as, 2 by factorial 5 plus 2 by 15 x to the power 5 whole divided by x so if I divide by x I will write 3 plus 2 upon factorial 5 plus 2 by 15 x to the power 4 now this x to the power 4 and this expression it is a positive coefficient with a positive power so this value will be positive and all the remaining power as the value as the power increases the value of this x to the power n it decreases so this expression will be three point something some positive value so in that case if i take its greatest linear function so greatest linear function of 2 sin x plus 10 x upon x when x tends to 0 it will be simply 3 mod of x minus 2 plus a square minus 6a plus 9 if x is less than 2 and it is 5 minus 2x when x is greater than or equal to 2. Now it says if this limit x tends to 2 greatest integer function of fx it exists then find the possible values of a. Now we know that for this limit to exist right limit must be equal to its left hand limit. Now first we are going to write its right hand limit. So it will be this limit x tends to 2 positive and here it will be this greater function of 5 minus 2x we let x as 2 plus h so it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive and then 5 minus 4 minus 2h which is 1 minus 2h and 1 negative is 0 so its greater function is 0 so its right hand limit is 0 now if its right hand limit is 0 its left hand limit must also be 0. So if we write its left hand limit which is limit 
x tends to 2 negative so it will be this greater function of x minus 2 plus a square minus 6a plus 9 now we will put x as 2 minus h so it will be this greater function of a square minus 6a plus 9 plus h and it must be equal to 0. Now this is true when a square minus 6a plus 9 it is greater than 0 but less than 1. Now this is a minus 3 whole square which is always greater than or equal to 0. So from here we will get minus 1 a minus 3 1 or value of a should lie between 2 and 4. So all the values of a which lies between 2 and 4 I want to satisfy this condition. So all the values that lie between 2 and 4 are 2.5, 3 and 3.5. So the correct options are B, C and D. Now here the question is we are given this function fx which is x plus 3 when x lies between minus 2 and 0, 4 when x is equal to 0 and 2x plus 5 when x lies between 0 and 1. Now first question is we need to find this limit x tends to 0 negative f greatest real function of x minus 10x. Now if we look at graph of y equals x and y equals 10x then when x is negative then in that case x is greater than 10x that means x minus 10x is greater than 0 but this value it lies between 0 and 1 therefore its greatest unit function x minus 10x will take the value 0 so this limit will be equal to f0 and f0 is 4 that means the correct option is this option b now the next one is limit x tends to 0 positive f fractional part of x upon 10x. Now we know that when x is positive then x is less than 10x or x upon 10x it is less than 1. Now when h lies between 0 and 1 then fraction part of h is same as h. So that means this limit it will be simply limit x tends to 0 positive f x by 10x. Now x by 10x is actually less than 1 and if it is less than 1 it will go to this definition. So we can write this as limit x tends to 0 positive 2 times x upon 10x plus 5 which is 7. So answer to the second part is 7 and that's your option C. Now here the question is find this limit x tends to alpha positive that is minimum of sin x and fraction part of x upon x minus 1 where alpha is the root of the equation sin x plus 1 equals x where these are greatest integer and fractional part functions respectively. Now if we draw the graph of sin x and fraction part of x that's the graph of sin x now this is 0 this is 1, 2 and 3 between 0 to 1 this is x then we will have one solution here and then we will have one more solution here and one more here whichever solution we take if this is alpha then in the neighborhood of alpha positive 
fraction part of x will always be greater than sin x. So that means this minimum of sin x and fraction part of x will always be sin x. So we are going to write this limit as limit x tends to alpha positive greatest near function of sin x upon x minus 1. Now we know that at this point it is sin x plus 1 equals x. Now beyond that we know that fractional part of x will be greater than sin x and fractional part of x is x minus 1. So x minus 1 will be greater than sin x. So we can write sin x upon x minus 1 will be less than 1. And if it is less than 1, then its greatest mean function value will be 0. So value of this limit is 0 and that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is, we need to solve this limit, which is limit x tends to 0. And then this summation greatest mean function of r square sine inverse rx upon x where r varies from 1 to n. Now we know that when x tends to 0 positive sin inverse rx it is greater than rx so basically sin inverse rx upon rx will be greater than 1 and if we multiply r cube then we can write r cube sin inverse rx upon rx will be greater than r cube so this value it is r cube plus h so greater function of r square sin inverse rx upon x it is equal to this summation r varies from 1 to n r cube and it is equal to 100 now this is n n plus 1 upon 2 whole square and this is 100 so we can write n n plus 1 will be equal to 20 which is 5 into 4 that means value of n is equal to 4 so n is 4 and that is answer to this question now here the question is we need to solve this limit which is limit x tends to infinite this is log x to the power n which is n log x minus greatest new function of x upon greatest new function of x suppose this is limit l now this l is limit x tends to infinite, we write this as n log x upon greater function of x minus 1. Now we know that we can write greatest near function of x as limit x tends to infinite and it will be n log x and this is x minus fraction part of x minus 1. Or we'll write this as limit x tends to infinite n log x upon x divided by 1 minus fraction part of x upon x minus 1. Now we'll solve these two limits. Limit x tends to infinite log x upon x which is infinity upon infinity form. Now we use L'Hopital's rule, it will be this limit x tends to infinite and this is 1 by x upon 1 which is 0. So this limit in the numerator will be 0 and we will solve the second limit which is limit x tends to infinite fractional part of x upon x. Now we know that fractional part of x will always lie between. 0 and 1 and we divide it with x so it will be this fraction part of x upon x less than 1 by x now we take this limit x tends to infinite it will be this 0 and then limit x tends to infinite fraction part of x upon x 
and will be 0. Then from sandwich theorem, we can say that the value of this limit will also be 0. So answer to this limit is 0 minus 1, which is simply minus 1. And that's your option A. Now here the question is, we are given this function fx when greater function of x is then equal to 0 and it is 0 for greater function of x equals 0. Now we need to find limit x tends to 0 fx is equal to what? Now if we find its left hand limit, its left hand limit will be limit x tends to 0 negative x square plus sine get a function of x upon get a function of x. Now we will take x as 0 minus h and we know that when x is 0 minus h then get a function of minus h is simply minus 1. So this limit it will be 1 minus sine 1 upon minus 1 which is minus 1 plus sine 1. So for this function left hand limit is minus 1 plus sine 1. Now if we look at its right hand limit its right hand limit will be limit x tends to 0 positive fx. Now when x tends to 0 positive then greater function of x is equal to 0 and if greater function of x is 0 well if this function is 0. So for this function right hand limit at 0 is 0. Left hand limit is minus 1 plus sine 1 and right hand limit is 0. So answer to this question should be this limit does not exist. Now here the question is we need to solve this limit. Limit x tends to 0 x to the power 18 to greatest new function of 1 by x cube. Now we know that greater function of x it is always less than equal to x but it is greater than x minus 1. So we can write greater function of 1 by x cube will be less than equal to 1 by x cube but greater than 1 by x cube minus 1. Now we will multiply it with x to the power 8. Now if we multiply it with x to the power 8, it will be x to the power 5 minus x to the power 8 and less than x to the power 8 into greatest function of 1 by x cube. It is less than equal to x to the power 5. Now if we take this limit x tends to 0, Then in that case, this left hand side function limit is 0 and limit of the function on the right hand side is 0. Then using sandwich theorem, value of this limit, it must also be 0. So this is 0, which is a rational number and which is also an integer. So the correct options are B, C and D. Now here the question is, we are given two statements. If we look at the statement 2 and statement 2 is limit x tends to infinite fractional part of x upon x it is equal to 0. Now we know that any fractional part function will always lie between 0 and 1. Now if we divide everything with x we can write fractional part of x upon x will be less than 1 by x. Now if we take this limit x tends to infinite then limit of this function on the left hand side is 0 and limit of this function on the right hand side which is 1 by infinite is also 0 then from sandwich theorem or squeeze play theorem, we can say that this limit x tends to infinite fraction part of x upon x is equal to 0. That means this statement 2 is correct. Now if we look at this statement 1, then we are supposed to find this limit x tends to 0 positive x upon a and get a function of b by x. Now we can write this as limit x tends to 0 positive this is x by a and we can write b by x minus fractional part of b by x. Now we can write this as b upon a minus this limit x tends to 0 and we can rearrange this as 1 upon a b by x and this is 1 by x. We will multiply and divide with b also. Now when x tends to 0, 1 by x tends to infinite. Now this Statement 2 says if x tends to infinite, then 
fractional part of x upon x it is zero so in that case this limit will be zero so value of this limit will be simply in p by a so this statement one is true statement two is true and statement two explains statement one now here the question is we need to find this limit x tends to zero one plus and here it should be fractional part of x so this is limit x tends to zero one plus fractional part of x to the power one upon fractional part x upon e to the power one upon fractional part of x now if we find its left hand limit left hand limit will be limit h tends to 0 positive we will take x as 0 minus h so it will be this 1 plus 1 minus h to the power 1 upon 1 minus h upon e to the power 1 upon 1 minus h which is 2 upon e in this case left hand limit is pretty simple and it is 2 by e now we will find its right hand limit now its right hand limit will be if we take x as 0 plus h and we know that fractional part of h is simply h so rhl will be limit h tends to 0 positive will be 1 plus h to the power 1 by h upon e to the power 1 by h now 1 plus h to the power 1 by h it is e and e upon e is 1 so this is 1 to the power infinite form and for 1 to the power infinite form we'll use our shortcut so it'll be this e to the power limit h tends to 0 positive it'll be 1 by h and then we'll have 1 plus h to the power 1 by h upon e minus 1 so it'll be this e to the power limit h tends to 0 e h and now we'll use the expansion of 1 plus h to the power 1 by h now this is e minus e h by 2 and then minus e now here e and e will cancel so this value will be e to the power minus 1 by 2 so left hand limit is 2 upon e and right hand limit is e to the power minus 1 by 2 so this limit it does not exist now here the question is we need to find the value of this limit limit x tends to pi by 4 to 1 plus greatest integral function of x to the power 1 upon log 10x now in this case we must know that when x approaches pi by 4 greatest integral function of x it is 0 now this greatest integer function it takes exact value it cannot take limiting value so this form it is not of the form 1 to the power infinite so this limit is just going to be 1 and that's your option d the other question is we need to evaluate this limit now since it has fraction part of x and fraction part of minus x we need to use left hand limit and right hand limit now if we take its left hand limit it will be limit x tends to 0 negative sin x minus x square minus fraction part of x fraction part of minus x upon x cos x minus x square minus fraction part of x into fraction part of minus x now when x tends to 0 negative we let x as 0 minus h and we know that fraction part of h is h and fraction part of minus h is 1 minus h so it will be this limit x tends to 0 negative now this is minus sin h minus h square and then minus it is 1 minus h into h and here will be this minus h cos h minus h square and then minus 1 minus 
h into h which is this limit x tends to 0 negative minus sin h now this is minus h upon minus h cos h minus h now we cancel this minus now we can write this as limit h tends to 0 positive sin h upon h plus 1 divided by 1 plus cos h which is 2 upon 2 and that is 1 so left hand limit in this case is 1 now we find its right hand limit now for right hand limit it will be limit x tends to 0 positive sin x minus x square minus fraction part of x fraction part of minus x upon x cos x minus x square minus x minus fraction part of minus x here we take x is 0 plus h and then again fraction part of h is h and fraction part of minus h is 1 minus h so it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive sin h minus h square minus h 1 minus h and here will be this h cos h minus h square minus h 1 minus h which is limit h tends to 0 sin h minus h upon h cos h minus h which is 0 upon 0 form so what we'll do is we'll use series expansion here so it'll be this limit h tends to 0 positive now sin h is h minus h cube upon factorial 3 minus h and here if we take this h common cos h is 1 minus h square upon factorial 2 minus h now here h and h will cancel here also h and h will cancel so minimum power in the numerator is h cube and minimum power in the denominator is also h cube so answer to this limit is factorial 2 upon factorial 3 which is simply 1 by 3 so in this case left hand limit is 1 and right hand limit is 1 by 3 so this limit it does not exist now this third question is if fx is a polynomial function such that f alpha square plus f dash alpha square equals 0 now assuming that it is a polynomial function with real coefficients from here we can say f alpha must be 0 and f dash alpha must also be 0 we need to find this limit which is limit x tends to alpha f x upon f dash x greatest integer function of f dash x upon f x now we know that any greater function of x is always less than or equal to x and it is strictly greater than x minus 1 so from here we can say this greatest integer function of f dash x upon f x will always be less than equal to f dash x upon f x and will be strictly greater than f dash x upon f x minus 1 now we need to multiply it with f x upon f dash x so if we multiply everything with f x upon f dash x we can write this as f x upon f dash x into f dash x upon f x minus 1 it is less than f x upon f dash x into greater function of f dash x upon f x and less than equal to f x upon f dash x into f dash x upon 
fx. Now I'll cancel. Here this first part will cancel. So we'll get this as 1 minus fx upon f dash x is less than fx upon f dash x into greater singular function of f dash x upon fx that is less than or equal to 1. Now if we take this limit extends to alpha then we can write this limit extends to alpha here also it will be this limit extends to alpha and here also it will be this limit extends to alpha. So value of this limit on the right hand side it is 1 we need to find value of this limit on the left hand side. Now this is 1 minus now what about this fx upon f dash x. Now if we know that f alpha is 0 and f dash alpha is 0 it means this alpha is double root of this function fx. So we can write this function fx as some x minus alpha square into and this f dash x will be some x minus alpha into hx. So this fx upon f dash x will have x minus alpha and then some ratio of polynomials px upon qx. Now if we take this limit extends to alpha here alpha minus alpha will be 0. So value of this limit is 0. So this expression will take the limiting value 0. So limit on the left hand side is also 1. Now limit on the right hand side is 1. Limit on the left hand side is also 1. Then from sandwich theorem we can say that this limit will be equal to 1. So answer to this limit is 1 and that's your option B. Now here the question is we are given this function fx we need to find right hand limit and left hand limit. Now we find right hand limit we are given that limit x tends to 0 positive sin inverse 1 minus fraction part of x cos inverse 1 minus fraction part x upon root 2 fraction part of x 1 minus fraction part of x. Now what we will do is we will let x as 0 plus h and we also know that fraction part of h is simply h. So it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive sin inverse 1 minus h cos inverse 1 minus h upon root 2 h and it will be this 1 minus h. Now we don't have a problem with sin inverse because it will be sin inverse 1 pi by 2 and 1 minus h is also 1. So we will put the values in these two then it will be sin inverse 1 which is pi by 2 and we also have this root 2. Now we are left with cos inverse 1 minus h upon under root h when this limit h tends to 0 positive. Now this is cos inverse 1 which is 0 and h is 0. So it is 0 upon 0 form. We will use L'Hopital's rule. We will write limit h tends to 0 positive pi upon 2 root 2. Now this is minus 1 upon under root of 1 minus 1 minus h whole square and then derivative of minus h is minus 1 divided by under root h is 1 upon 2 root h. Now minus and minus will be plus so it will be this limit h tends to 0 pi upon 2 root 2 and we can write this as 2 root h and here will be this under root of 2h minus h square. Now under root h will cancel so we get this value as pi by 2. So for this function its right hand limit is pi by 2. Now we will find its left hand limit. Now for left hand limit we will write limit x tends to 0 negative sin inverse 1 minus fraction part of x cos inverse 1 minus fraction part of x upon 
under root 2 fraction part of x n1 minus fraction part of x now we let x as 0 minus h now we know that fraction part of minus h is 1 minus h so now we can write this as this limit h tends to 0 positive sin inverse 1 minus 1 minus h cos inverse 1 minus 1 minus h root 2 1 minus h and this is 1 minus 1 minus h which is this limit h tends to 0 positive sin inverse h into cos inverse h upon root 2 1 minus h and then h now sin inverse h upon h is 1 cos inverse 0 is pi by 2 and this is root 2 so its left hand limit will be pi upon 2 root 2 so for this function left hand limit is pi upon 2 root 2 now since left hand limit and right hand limit they are not equal so this limit it does not exist at x equals 0 now the question is if this box represents greatest linear function then we need to find this limit which is limit n tends to infinite 1 upon n to the power 4 and then this greatest linear function of 1 cube x plus 2 cube x up to n cube x now we know that greatest linear function of x is x minus fractional part of x so we'll write this as limit n tends to infinite 1 cube x minus fractional part of 1 cube x plus 2 cube x minus fractional part of 2 cube x up to n cube x minus fractional part of n cube x whole divided by n to the power 4. Now we will separate these two limits. So we will write them as limit n tends to infinite and first one will be 1 cube plus 2 cube up to n cube into x upon n to the power 4 and then minus this limit n tends to infinite and this is fractional part of 1 cube x fractional part of 2 cube x plus fractional part of n cube x upon n to the power 4. Now we know that any fractional part function will always lie between 0 and 1. So the maximum value this numerator can take is n and n upon n to the power 4 will always be 0. So this second limit will be 0. So now we can write this as limit n tends to infinite. Now this is n n plus 1 upon 2 whole square into x upon n to the power 4. Now since this is infinite limit, we are looking for highest power of n. Now highest power of n the numerator is n to the power 4 and the denominator also it is n to the power 4. Now here its coefficient will be x by 4 and that's your option d. Now here the question is we need to find this limit x tends to pi by 2 sin x upon cos inverse the greatest linear function of 1 by 4 into 3 sin x minus sin 3x where this box represents greatest linear function. Now if we look at this 1 by 4 3 sin x now minus sin 3x is 3 sin x minus 4 sin cube x. Now this 3 sin x will cancel. This 4 will also cancel. So this value will be simply sin cube x. So we can write this limit as limit 
x tends to pi by 2 sin x upon cos inverse greater stated function of sin cube x. Now when x tends to pi by 2 sin cube x tends to 1 but it is still less than 1 because it will be 1 only at pi by 2. So within the vicinity of pi by 2 it will be less than 1. So this sin cube x it is nearly 1 but less than 1. In that case greatest unit function of sin cube x will be nothing but 0. So it will be this sin pi by 2 1 and then cos inverse 0 and cos inverse 0 is pi by 2. So answer to this limit will be 2 upon pi and that's your option A. Now here the question is we need to find this limit x tends to 0 10 inverse x tends to 0 10 fraction part of x minus 1 into sine fraction part of x upon fraction part of x and fraction part of x minus 1. Now we will write it left hand limit it will be limit x tends to 0 negative 10 fractional part of x minus 1 into sine fractional part of x divided by fractional part of x and then fractional part of x minus 1. Now we let x as 0 minus h and we know that fractional part of minus h is 1 minus h. So we write this as limit h tends to 0 positive. Now 10 of fraction part of minus h minus 1. So there will be 10 minus h and here it will be sine 1 minus h. Here also it will be 1 minus h and here it will be this minus h. Now 10 h upon h it is 1 and this value will be sin 1. So left hand limit here is sin 1. Now we will come to its right hand limit. Now for right hand limit we will take limit x tends to 0 positive 10 fraction part of x minus 1 into sin fraction part of x divided by fraction part of x into fraction part of x minus 1. Now we will let x as 0 plus h. Now in this case it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive and we know that fraction part of h is simply h. So it will be this 10 h minus 1 into sin h upon h into h minus 1. Now sin h upon h it is 1. So here this value will be 10 1. Now left hand limit is sin 1. Right hand limit is 10 1. So this limit is non-existent. And that's your option D. Now here the question is we are given this function fx which is defined in terms of fraction part function. Now first we will find its limit x tends to 0 positive. So this is 10 square fractional x upon x square minus greatest integer function of x whole square. Now we know that x is greatest integer function of x plus fraction part of x. Now we square it, we can write x square minus greatest integer function of x square and that will be fraction part of x square plus 2 times fraction part of x into greatest integer function of x. So we write this as limit x tends to 0 positive 10 square fraction part of x upon fraction part of x square plus 2 times fraction part of x into greatest state function of x. Now we let x as 0 plus h and we know that fraction part of h is simply h. So it will be this limit h tends to 0 10 square h upon h square plus 2h and then greatest wave function of 0 plus h is simply 0. So it will be this 10 square h upon h square which is 1. So this right hand limit it is 1 and that means this option A it is correct. Now if we look at its left hand limit it will be limit x tends to 0 negative then under root of 
fractional part of x into cot of fractional part of x. Now here we'll write x as 0 minus h and fractional part of minus h is simply 1 minus h. So this limit l b limit h tends to 0 positive under root of 1 minus h into cot 1 minus h. Now we put h as 0. This limit will be under root of cot 1. So that is this option B. It is incorrect. Now if you look at this option C will be this cot inverse of square of left hand limit which is cot 1 and that is one. This option C is also correct and option D is incorrect as limit does not exist. Now here the question is we need to find this limit x tends to pi by 2 this greatest in a function of x minus pi by 2 upon cos x. Now here what we will do is we will find left hand limit and right hand limit. First we will find its right hand limit which is limit x tends to pi by 2 positive x minus pi by 2 upon cos x and for this we will let x as pi by 2 plus h. Now we take x as pi by 2 plus h, we will get this as limit h tends to 0 positive and here will be this h upon now cos pi by 2 plus h is minus sin h. Now we know that sin h is less than h and it is greater than 0 when h tends to 0 or we can write h upon sin h it will be greater than 1. Now we multiply it with minus we can write minus h upon sin h it is less than minus 1 and if this value is less than minus 1 then its greatest inter function will be simply minus 2. So its right hand limit will be minus 2. Now we will come to its left hand limit. So its left hand limit will be a limit x tends to pi by 2 negative and there will be x minus pi by 2 upon cos x. Now here we let x as pi by 2 minus h. So it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive and this is minus h upon sin h which is same expression so this limit is also minus 2 so the value of this limit is minus 2 and that's your option c now here the question is evaluate this limit n tends to infinite 1 into 2x plus 2 into 3x up to n into n plus 1x upon n cube. Now we can write this as limit n tends to infinite. This summation r varies from 1 to n greatest new function of r r plus 1 into x upon n cube and we know that greater function of x is equal to x minus fractional part of x. So we'll write this as limit n tends to infinite summation r varies from 1 to m r r plus 1 into x minus this summation r varies from 1 to m fractional part of r r plus 1x divided by n cube. Now we know that any fractional part x function will lie between 0 and 1. Since we have these n summations of 1, so all these n summations, this will be less than n. So if it is less than n and when it is divided by n cube, this limit when n tends to infinite will be simply 0. So this limit for the second part is 0. We just have to solve this first part. Now we can write this as limit 
n tends to infinite and this is summation r square plus summation r into x upon n cube. Now this is limit n tends to infinite. This is n n plus 1 to n plus 1 divided by 6 plus n n plus 1 by 2 into x upon n cube. Now since this is infinite limit highest power of n in the numerator is n cube and the denominator also it is n cube. So answer to this limit is coefficient of n cube in the numerator and denominator. In the numerator coefficient of n cube is 2x by 6 which is x by 3 and the denominator it is 1. So answer to this limit is simply x by 3 and that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is we need to find this limit x tends to a negative mod of x cube by a minus greatest the function of x upon a whole cube. Now what we'll do is we'll let x as a minus h. So it'll be this limit h tends to 0 positive mod of a minus h cube upon a minus and this is a minus h upon a. So it'll be this limit h tends to 0 positive. Now this is mod a cube upon a and a is greater than 0. So it will be this a square minus and here it is 1 minus h upon a which is less than 1. And get a function of value which lies between 0 and 1 is 0. So answer to this limit is simply a square and that's your option c. Now the question is we need to solve this limit x tends to 0 greatest in a function of 1 minus e to the power x sin x upon mod x. Now since this question has both greatest integer and mod with change definition at 0, we have to use left hand limit and right hand limit. So first we will write its left hand limit. So its left hand limit will be limit x tends to 0 negative. 1 minus e to the power x sin x upon mod x. Now we let x as 0 minus h. So it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive and it will be 1 minus e to the power minus h and here it will be this sin minus h upon mod of minus h which we can write as get a function of 1 minus e to the power minus h into minus sin h upon h. Now we know that if h tends to 0 positive then e to the power minus h it lies between 0 and 1 then 1 minus e to the power minus h will be greater than 0 but less than 1. In the same way we know that if h is positive then h is nearly 0 then sin h is less than h and it will be greater than 0 or we can say sin h upon h will lie between 0 and 1. Now we multiply it with minus then we can write value of sin h upon h will lie between minus 1 and 0. So one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So their product negative and both of them the value lie between 0 and 1. So value of this product 1 minus e to the power minus h into sin h upon h will lie between minus 1 and 0. 
and if this value lies between minus 1 and 0 then its greatest in your function will be minus 1 so its left hand limit is minus 1 now we'll come to its right hand limit now for its right hand limit we'll write limit it tends to 0 positive and then it will be data function of 1 minus e to power h and here it will be this sign h upon h now in this case e to the power h it will be greater than 1 so 1 minus e to the power h will lie between minus 1 and 0 whereas sign h upon h will lie between 0 and 1 now again this product 1 minus e to the power h into sin h upon h it will lie between minus 1 and 0 so value of this greatest function again is minus 1 now since left hand limit is minus 1 and right hand limit is minus 1 value of this limit is minus 1 and that's your option a now here the question is find this limit theta tends to 0 greater than a function of n sin theta upon theta and plus n 10 theta upon theta. Now we know that sin theta is less than theta is less than 10 theta when theta tends to 0 positive or we can write when theta tends to 0 sin theta upon theta is less than 1 and it is less than 10 theta upon theta so basically sin theta upon theta it is nearly 1 minus h when n theta upon theta is nearly 1 plus h dash now we multiply it with n then we can write n sin theta upon theta it will be n minus n h and in the same way n ten theta upon theta will be n plus n into h dash now we take its greatest near function greater function of n sin theta upon theta now this is n minus some small value so it will be n negative which is n minus 1 and greater function of n ten theta upon theta this is n plus small h which is n now we add them this limit theta tends to zero n sin theta upon theta plus n ten theta upon theta it will be n minus one plus n which is 2n minus one so answer to this limit is 2n minus one and that's your option c now here the question is we need to find this limit which is limit x tends to 0 positive limit n tends to infinite and then this summation r square into sin x to the power x greater than your function where r varies from 1 to n whole divided by n cube now we can write greatest in a function of x as x minus fractional part of x so it will be this limit x tends to 0 positive and it will be this limit n tends to infinite and then we can write this as summation r varies from 1 to n r square sin x to the power x upon n cube minus this limit n tends to infinite fractional part of r square sin x to the power x upon n cube now we know that any fractional part function it will lie between 0 and 1 so therefore this summation r square sin x to the power x it will always be greater than equal to 0 but it will be less than n 
and I will divide everything with n cube. And if we take this limit, n tends to infinite, left hand side is 0, right hand side is 0, then from sandwich theorem we can say that the value of this limit will be 0. So in that case, this limit will be limit x tends to 0 positive, limit n tends to infinite, and this is sin x to the power x, and then summation r square, and summation r square is n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Now this is infinite limit. Now highest power of n in the numerator is 3 and highest power of n in the denominator is also 3. So answer to this limit will be coefficient of n cube in the numerator and denominator. So it will reduce to a limit x tends to 0 positive 2 sin x to the power x upon 6 which is 1 by 3 sin x to the power x. Now we have to solve this limit in x. So it is this limit x tends to 0 positive sin x to the power x whole divided by 3. Now this is 0 to the power 0 form. We can write this as 1 by 3 e to the power limit x tends to 0 x log sin x or we can write this as 1 by 3 e to the power limit x tends to 0 log sin x upon 1 by x. Now this is infinity upon infinity form. Now if we use L'Hopital's rule, we can write this as 1 by 3 e to the power limit x tends to 0 and this is 1 upon sin x into cos x and then it will be minus 1 upon x square. So this is 1 by 3 e to the power limit x tends to 0 minus this is x upon sin x and then into x cos x. x upon sin x is 1 and x is 0 so this is e to the power 0 and e to the power 0 is 1. So answer to this limit is 1 by 3. Now question number 18 it says let P and B number of digits when 8 to the power n is written in base 6 and let Q and B number of digits when 6 to the power n is written in base 4. We need to find this limit which is limit n tends to infinite P n Q n upon n square. Now there is a direct formula for that. So if we write 8 to the power n to the base of 6 then number of digits P n it is given by greatest integer function of log 8 to the power n to the base 6 and then plus 1. So this is the formula to find out number of digits in other base. So in the same way we can find number of digits qn when the base is 4. So qn will be log base is 4 and number here is 6 to the power n and plus 1. So basically pn is n log 8 base 6 plus 1 and qn is greatest integer n log 6 base 4 plus 1. Now we need to find this limit which is limit n tends to infinite pn into qn upon n square. Now in greatest integer function we know this property that greatest integer function of x is always less than or equal to x and it is greater than x minus 1. So I can write pn is less than or equal to n log 8 base 6 plus 1 and it is greater than n log 8 base 6. In the same way we can write qn so qn will be less than n log 6 base 4 plus 1 and here will be n log 6 base 4. Now if we multiply them then we can write it as n square log 8 base 6 into log 6 base 4 is less than p 
pn into qn and it is less than n log 8 base 6 plus 1 into n log 6 base 4 plus 1. So now I'll need to find this limit. So I'll need to divide it with n square. So I'll also divide it with n square. So if I'll divide it with n square, and I'll take this limit also. I'll take this limit and tends to infinite. Now, since it is an infinite limit, so highest power of n in the numerator and denominator is two. So answer to this left hand limit will be simply log eight into log six. And here it is limit n tends to infinite pn qn by n square. And here also the highest power is n square. So here also this limit will be log eight base six into log six base four. Now Sandwich theorem says if fx lies between gx and hx and if limiting value of gx is l and limiting value of hx is l then the limiting value of this limit is also l so which simply means the value of this limit is equal to log 8 base 6 into log 6 base 4 so i can write it as log 2 base 8 upon log 6 base 2 and here will be log 6 base 2 upon log 4 base 2 so it will cancel so 8 is 2 cube and 4 is 2 square so the value of this limit is simply 3 by 2 and that's your option number c now here the question is we are given this function fx in terms of greatest integer function and fractional part function now when x is greater than 0 fx is defined as so this first case when x is greater than 0 fx is equal to this limit n tends to infinite px by n and then this summation where r varies from 1 to n and it will be this greatest linear function of r square plus r minus e to the power minus x minus 1 upon r r plus 1 plus lambda now since r is an integer we can write this as limit n times infinite px by n and then this summation r takes from 1 to n and we know that greatest linear function of x plus n is greatest linear function of x plus n if n is an integer so it will be this r square plus r minus 1 and then plus this greatest linear function of minus e to the power minus x upon r r plus 1 and plus lambda now when x is greater than 0 e to the power minus x it lies between 0 and 1 and then minus e to the power minus x will lie between minus 1 and 0 so greatest linear function of minus e to the power minus x it will be minus 1 so we can write this as limit n tends to infinite p x by n then this summation r varies from 1 to n and will be r square plus r minus 2 upon r r plus 1 plus lambda which we can also write as this limit n tends to infinite px by n summation 1 r by 1 to n and then minus 2 summation 1 upon r r plus 1 plus lambda here r by 1 to n now this is limit n tends to infinite this is px by n now this is n and this is minus 2 and we can write this as this summation r varies from 1 to n and here it will be 1 upon r minus 1 upon 
r plus 1 plus lambda so we will write this as limit n tends to infinite p x by n into n minus 2 and here it will be 1 minus 1 upon n plus 1 plus lambda that we multiply it then we will get this as px plus lambda so this function fx is px plus lambda when x is greater than 0 at x equal to 0 it is q now we need to find the definition when x is less than 0 now if x is less than 0 it is given as this limit n tends to infinite this summation r varies from 1 to n fractional part of r square plus r plus e to the power x minus 1 upon r r plus 1 now we know that fractional part of x plus n it is equal to simply fractional part of x. So we can write this as limit n tends to infinite. This summation r varies from 1 to n. All these integers they will be removed. So it will be simply fractional part of e to the power x upon r r plus 1. And also when x is less than 0 e to the power x lies between 0 and 1. So its fractional part will be same as e to the power x. So it will be this limit n tends to infinite e to the power x and then this summation r varies from 1 to n 1 upon r minus 1 upon r plus 1 which is this limit n tends to infinite e to the power x 1 minus 1 upon n plus 1 which is nothing but e to the power x. So this function will be q when x equal to 0 and it will be e to the power x when x is less than 0. Now it says it is differentiable in r. If it is differentiable in r then it must be continuous at 0 and if it is continuous at 0 that means lambda equals q and will be equal to e to the power 0 which is 1. So value of lambda is 1 and value of q is also 1. Now it must also be differentiable. Now, if we find f dash x, it will be p when x is greater than 0 and it will be e to the power x when x is less than 0. So, in that case, this p, it is equal to e to the power 0, which is 1. So, the value of p plus q plus lambda is 3 and that's your option d. Now, the second question is find the value of f dash log 2, f dash log 1 by 2 f dash log 3 upon 2 square to infinite. Now we know that f dash x it is 1 when x is greater than 0 and it is e to the power x when x is less than 0. Now at log 2 this value is positive so this is 1 plus now all these log 1 by 2 log 3 upon 2 square log 5 upon 2 cube this x is less than 0. So for all these, it will be this e to the power x. So it will be this e to the power log 1 by 2 e to the power log 3 upon 2 square up to infinite. So we need to find so this series which is 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 3 by 2 square plus 5 by 2 cube up to infinite. Now we will write this series once again leaving one term. So, it will be this 1 by 2, 3 by 2 square and we will multiply it with common ratio that is 1 by 2. Now, we subtract, we will get this as s by 2 and here will be 1 plus and this is 2 upon 2 square 1 by 2. This is 2 upon 2 cube 1 upon 2 square up to infinite. Now, this is a upon 1 minus r which is 2. So, sum of this series is 4 and that's your option D. Now, this third question is 
if g is inverse of f then g dash 1 by 2 is now we know that fx is e to the power x when x is less than 0 so if we look at f log 1 by 2 f log 1 by 2 will be e to the power log 1 by 2 and that is 1 by 2 so that means f log 1 by 2 is equal to 1 by 2 now we know that if fx and gx they are inverse function of each other then g of fx it is equal to x now we differentiate we can write g dash fx into f dash x it must be 1 and what we'll do here is we'll put x as log 1 by 2 so here it will be g dash and f log 1 by 2 into f dash log 1 by 2 and it is equal to 1. Now we already know that f log 1 by 2 is 1 by 2. Now f dash log 1 by 2. Now log 1 by 2 is less than 0. So f dash x is e to the power x. So it will be e to the power log 1 by 2 which is 1 by 2 and this is 1. So from here we can say value of g dash 1 by 2 must be equal to 2. And that's your option C.